Hey y'all, CB here at NBS Weldon. Super service trucks looking sexy today. We're not uh, gonna be running the super service truck go. We're gonna be looking at a trailer over here. This is my trailer. I tell you what the current do's and nations is. Uh, I got a buddy that he has a mowing service, got uh, mowing equipment, and he has a trailer that he hauls two mowing machines on. Um, it's got a ramp on the back and the way it works is if he wants the machine that's in the front he can't get it off there he saw this trailer that i have and let me show you this trailer see how these ramps are set up this is set up where you could have a, a four-wheeler or a lawnmower or whatever and run one up the rear ramp and then run one up the side ramp so if the one you if you want the one that's loaded in front you can unload it from the side ramp and leave the one on the back his trailer's not like that the way his trailer is he only has the ramp at the back and the border of his trailer goes all the way around the other three sides so we're going to modify his trailer to make it like that now he came by here and we took a look at it and decided that's what he wanted to do and the first thing on the job obviously we need a ramp some have to build one got uh, two by two by one eighth angle iron here that's what his rear ramp's made out of, and it's working fine. So that's what we're going to build the side ramp out of. Uh, I've got some three-quarter inch round bar and three-quarter inch pipe. Can make a hinge out of that. And I've got some three-quarter number nine raised expanded metal. Um, for this application, you want the raised. You know, you can get this in the raised or flattened, and sometimes you want the flattened. For this, we want the traction, so you want it raised. Uh, this stuff's sharp, um, so that's why sometimes you don't want sharp. But we want traction for a mowing machine to climb up, so we, we want raised. So uh, what we're going to do is we'll build a ramp and a set of hinges first. And once we got the ramp built and a set of hinges then that stuff will be ready. That way, when he brings me the trailer, um, some of the work will already be done. So let's build a ramp.
got us a basic frame here with the three quarter raised expanded metal tacked in it. And uh, I want to put braces in it. I don't want any of them to be further apart than 12 inches. Uh, we got five feet across here, so I got marks on here at one, two, three, four, five. And I've got a piece of angle iron. Let's look at this. You see a lot of these ramps done that way. Uh, and you see them weld this expanded metal, uh, you know, to this side of the angle iron when they're done like that. And uh, you see those broke a lot. Uh, I think I want to try putting it this way. This is giving that angle iron a little bit wider footprint. I don't, I'm not real concerned about it making much of a structural difference, but one question in my mind is that does it really do a whole lot of good to put a whole bunch of tacks on this expanded metal? Uh, I don't think it does. I think it hurts it. I think the more you weld it beyond what it takes to hold it in place, uh, the more you damage it. It's going to move. If you're going to drive a lawnmower, a four-wheeler, or side-by-side -side up this trailer, that expanded metal is going to move. And the more tacks you got in it, the less it can flex without breaking. Now, this might be crazy, but this is for a buddy of mine. And if he has a problem with it, you know, he'll bring it back to me and, and I'll take care of it. But I don't think I'm going to go crazy welding this expanded metal to this frame. I think the stitching that I got right now is probably all I'm going to stitch. And I don't think I'm going to stitch this expanded metal to these five braces, or four braces actually, uh... I don't think I'm going to tack it to that at all. I'd rather see it flex and um, and see how that does, you know. I, I think it's got a better chance. I can show you here how many tacks I got on it. Like right here, I tacked every other one with a real good tack. And then, of course, these are a little closer together, the... The, the pieces of metal are a little closer together so the tacks I've got them maybe three and a half inches apart I don't think I'm going to tack it more than that uh, but we are going to cut those braces I'll put four or five braces in here um, and then We'll pretty much have the ramp put together.
So I ended up tacking the three pieces in the middle. I, I ran a flat bar up the center, and that was the only thing I was going to tack. But uh, the flat bar was so light that there was still a gap between the expanded metal and the angle iron. And I wanted the expanded metal to be touching that angle iron. <clears throat> so I ended up having to attack it to the, the, this angle iron and this angle iron. And uh, hopefully where, you know, this will be pretty narrow and the wheels of the mowing machine you know i think they'll be more like here so this um, this expanded metal right here hopefully will be able to flex a little more and and maybe that'll keep it from breaking the expanded metal like you always see uh, on these ramps but that's about all i'm going to do to this for now and uh we'll be moving on with this a little bit further in the future Hey, look there. That's the trailer this ramp goes on. There's some kind of a removable side piece. Right here. We're going to do away with all that and put this ramp on here. Uh, going to have to do some shoveling, but uh, here we go. So the hinges that I made to use for this, that's a three quarter inch schedule 40 pipe cut two inches long. So each hinge would take th uh, three pieces of pipe two inches long. And then you cut a piece of three quarter inch round bar, six or six and a quarter inches long. And you put it through those three pipes and you weld, get it centered up pretty good and weld the rod to the end of the outer pipes that means this part and this part of the hinge gets welded to the trailer and this part of the hinge gets welded to the ramp 
So I got two hinges like that that I made, simple hinges, uh, and put on there. I just put a few tacks on them hinges uh, and tried to lay the ramp down and it didn't work. It broke the tacks. So the size tacks I was trying to use were too small for the weight of the ramp. And uh, I did put more braces in the ramp than I thought I was gonna and it's a little heavier. It's a little on the heavy side, but you know, it, I'd rather it was a little heavy than to uh, worry about it bending. This is a young fella that's got this trailer. He's strong. He can he can lift that up. It's definitely no problem for me. I've lifted it up and down several times, and like I say, it's uh, it's a little heavier than some ramps this size. But I'd rather be a little heavier. It looks good. So the next part of this is going to be holding it up and I got to add some framing to the trailer to box it in. I've added one piece right here. I put this piece of angle iron on and when I put this piece of angle iron on that I, I used the three quarter pipe to set the distance between here. And there's a reason why I did that. And it has to do with the way I'm going to hold it up. So I've made these pieces. These are some pins I made. This is a three quarter inch round bar and a piece of three quarter inch pipe that's pr fairly short. That's a little bit warm. I don't wanna hang on to that for too long right now, but any hooser. Uh, what we're gonna be, what we're gonna be looking at as far as holding the ramp up is that, you know, I'm gonna put a, I'm gonna put a piece of pipe on this upright and another piece of pipe this size on the ramp and drop that pin through the two of them. And uh, we'll have to add some metal over there to do that again. So I've got a pin on each side, so. Let's do that as our next do's nation. Oh yeah. I like how all this is looking. One thing I'm noticing, uh, I thought of when you pull these out, it'd be nice if there was another sleeve, pipe sleeve welded on here to drop them into. Uh, you know, instead of just standing there with it in your hand, if you could pull it out of that, put it in another one where it's out of the way and being held, that would be good. There's another thing I'm thinking of. Might want to put this ramp down and take a look. Put them sleeves on there. Let me set you up. You can watch me put this ramp down. And when I put them pins in them sleeves, I bet you're going to think, man, he looks cool when he's doing that. Now with this down, uh, the thing I'm noticing that's awkward is grabbing the thing at the very first when you grab it to flip it up. Uh, one thing I feel like would make this a little bit better is if it had a handle on it. So let's make a handle and put on there. I'm going to make a nice handle out of this half inch round bar. Places I've worked where they had uh, an iron worker or a brake uh, a lot of times I'd see guys bend flat bar in an iron worker in a brake in a, in a V, uh, in a V block. And it looks really bad. It smashes it. Uh, it works. But, uh, then another thing that I've seen happen a lot with, uh, people heating round bars and bending them is they would stretch it. They would heat it up and they would bend it. And when they bend it, it would stretch it and make it look really bad. Uh, I don't remember the last time I mentioned this on the channel. If uh, if you heard it before, you're going to hear it again. But basic rule of thumb, if you're going to heat a piece of steel and bend it, you want to heat an area twice the thickness of the material. 
So where I'm talking about on this, this half inch bar, I'm gonna make a 90 degree bend on this half inch bar. Where I want my bend, I need to take that torch and I need to heat a place an inch. Uh, one inch of that should be hot to the point that it's orange. And if you do that, it'll make a nice radius bend. It's not going to stretch the material and, and look bad like it will if you just heat too small of an area. Now, you can heat more. And the more you heat, uh, you're going to get a different radius. It'll be more rounded. Um, I don't recommend doing that because it, it'll get, it'll get harder to duplicate. You can do it. Uh, but just wanted to mention that, you know, if this, if this was a one inch round bar and I was going to heat it and bend it, I'd heat an area two inches and you'll get the same result. And it works the same way for key stock square bar, even flat bar. You want to bend a piece of half by three and get a nice bend. You, you know, you, if, if you're bending it like, uh, this is your half by three flat bar and you're bending it like that, uh, you know, you'd, you'd want to heat an inch. And you'll get a nice radius. So let's make a handle. I'm not going to mark this out. Let's just eyeball it and see how it turns out. Got that doozing done. Thanks for watching. Hey y'all, we're coming to you from the break room here at MBS Well, and I want to show you the t-shirts we got. The MBS Weldon t-shirts got uh, MBS Weldon on the front, American flag on the sleeve. Great big MDS welding here on the back. Helps the channel if you buy a t-shirt. If you're interested in a t-shirt, send Tina an email request. Uh, nbswelding at aol.com. Thank you.